Hi everyone and welcome back to The Shack for a very simple but very special episode and it's special for one reason alone, you fabulous people, specifically the now over 10,000 of you that have subscribed to the channel. It's still sinking into me as I only started doing this six months ago and got off to a somewhat shaky start, knowing as I did absolutely nothing about what it takes to start and run a YouTube channel. I'm clearly still learning and I'm guessing that will be the case for a long while yet but hopefully you'll all continue to enjoy the channel as much as I enjoy producing it. The new studio space has given me more scope and although I'm still classing it as a work in progress, the separation of the teardown and workshop spaces, the maker space and the studio itself, along with more storage is really making a difference. But amazingly, I'm already seeming to fill this up. So we'll have to be rethinking again soon how to move this forward as the channel continues to grow. So as we hit the 10k goal, I'd like to do a little retrospective on the top 5 videos and you may be surprised over the common theme, or maybe not because you'll think it's well deserved. And then we'll take a little look forward to just some of the cool things we have coming up in the next few weeks and months. So in true top of the pops fashion, number 5, the micro that changed everything. This video to date has had over 27,000 views and some really good questions, debates and observations in the comments section. People from the UK specifically almost unilaterally agreeing that this machine was really the star of the computer scene in the UK and many people attributing their entire careers to the existence of this little monster. Across the pond and in other overseas locations, its impact may have been felt less, as in those local markets there were other machines around at the time, which of course caused a big stir wherever they were. However, one thing remains. When this machine was launched, you couldn't buy a cheaper computer, and if you didn't have much money, that could only have been a good thing. Number 4. 100% brand new ZX80-81 Another Sinclair related video in the top 5, this one getting over 30,000 views so far. This video only came about because in my senseless destruction of my own ZX81 mainboard, I wanted to see if there were replacement boards out there and this kit came to my attention. It's a cracking little machine and I'm hoping that this video gave it the recognition it deserves. I've been contacted by a couple of other people who have similar boards, so knowing me they'll probably have to make their way into my collection at some point too. Number 3. 100% brand new Spectrum Spotting the theme yet? Yes, another Sinclair favourite, this time chronicling my build of the Harlequin 128K Spectrum clone. Over 31,000 views on this, so you guys out there love the Sinclair stuff. The recently reviewed Sisyph 512K clone board is sitting in this glorious case now. My Harlequin build is making its way into a brand new case as soon as it arrives. Number 2. Too good to be true. With just over 39,000 views, the second place video isn't Sinclair related. Yay! It was a review of the Pi 1541-stroke Epix fastload cartridge for the Commodore 64 and I still use this almost every day. I really can't fault it and stand by everything I said in the video. Through all the comments, debates, etc. that were made on the video, one thing was made clear to me though, I've got to get myself an Ultimate 2 cartridge at some point and review that. And finally, the number one spot goes to Number 1. The 1987 iPad Pro Well, surprise surprise, the top spot with an amazing almost 58,000 views was this look back at Sir Clive Sinclair's little productivity powerhouse. I absolutely adore this machine and so it seems did many of you. I've even ordered myself some new cartridges and modern upgrades as I've started to carry it along with me when I don't want to be distracted by pop-ups and the lure of the web. So there's a definite Sinclair bias there and you may think that's because I favour the Sinclair brand but there are currently 12 Sinclair related videos on the channel and 13 for Commodore. Perhaps Sinclair fans are more starved for content or perhaps it's just more of a British computer and I have a largely British audience. Now before we get on to future projects I wanted to draw attention to the channel memberships and the fact that looking at the take up of the offering I've not got the balance right. Many people have contacted me to say they love to support the channel but it's just too much financial commitment and that's absolutely fair. To current members thank you and I hope you'll continue to support the channel on the new platform when it launches. So what's coming up over the next few weeks and months? Well, given that you guys really enjoy the Can We Make a Brand New series, 
And thanks to our lovely sponsors, PCBWay, we'll be continuing our MSX series with a full build of an MSX2. We've got the PCBs and the ICs ready. We're just waiting for all the other components to arrive before we can crack on with that. There are some global shortages of certain components, unfortunately, so this may not be until early August. A bit sooner than that, we've got this Acorn A3000 to restore and refurbish. It was donated to the channel by Amy, and it's a fascinating machine holding a very special place in British computing history, so look out for that. We've also got this lovely CD32 to investigate, another donation to the channel, this time from John, and I've got to say I'm really excited for this one. I never owned a CD32, but I remember vividly wanting one so very badly, and John donated Wing Commander too. Cannot wait for this. In terms of other donations, we've got that Atari ST hard drive and the complete Atari 800 to restore, courtesy of Phil. And unbelievably, there's an A1200 and an A500 Plus on the way to the shack, courtesy of Paul, that will really help to round out the Amiga collection. Thanks to all of you for the donations, and I hope you know how amazing you all are. And there's lots of other bits coming in too, and don't worry Amstrad fans, there will be some CPC stuff coming soon, I promise. As a kid, the CPC was my next stop after the Spectrum, but my parents didn't have a massive amount of money, so I had the green screen version. I'm hoping to get hold of the colour monitor version I always dreamed of. And on the channel Ko-Fi support page, you'll notice the current Ko-Fi goal is to get enough funds together to grab an Enterprise 64 or 128, just because I think they're absolutely fascinating machines, which again, were a victim of timing. So thanks to those who've already contributed there, I really appreciate it. Right, before we sign off this special 10k episode, there's really only one thing left to address. If you recall, I said that Mrs RetroShack laughed when I said I might get 10k subscribers by June. Well, I'm keen to hear what she has to say about this. Thanks again, and don't forget the usual subscribe, like, bell, coffee, comments, and I'll see you back in the shack real soon. Bye for now.